about Thank you for recording that. And I'm going to start over. My name is Rhonda Jones. I am Mesa's Health Promotion Consultant. <laughs> As a Health Promotion Consultant, what I do is I help our members start worksite wellness programs. If you're not familiar with that concept, worksite wellness is creating a work culture that supports health and wellness, healthy behavior. So often we learn about how to be healthy, but it's impossible to do at work because of the infrastructure or the policies or the limited access to uh, healthy food. So worksite wellness is about creating that not only at home, not only in the community, but that those times when we're at work and uh, we discovered um, in the last 12 months, we could do that digitally, um, virtually as well. So we're ex so excited that we can help you build the worksite wellness program at, at, in a building, brick and mortar or digitally. Um, we also provide content, wellness content to uh, worksite wellness curriculums. That includes nutrition, uh, preventive care services, fitness, and even stress management, which is so important right now. Now, I think we're about, what, eight weeks into the new year? Some of you may have given up on your new year's goal. Well, we're here to tell you to stop, hold it, throw away the donut, put away, put it away. It's don't quit now. Now is the time you'll start seeing results. But we are so excited to bring you um, someone here um, that can help us all when it comes to meal prep and planning meals and tips on weight loss. Um, I'm so happy to bring Hebney Nutrition Consultants here in this space today. And we have a registered dietitian. Her name is Selinez Mar Martinez. And I'm gonna let Selena tell you about herself and talk about what we're gonna do today. Hi everyone, I hope everybody can hear me okay. We did a little pre-audio test. I think everything was okay, but my name is Selena's Martinez. I'm a registered dietitian in Orlando, Florida. I am with Hebney Nutrition Consultants. Hebney is a nonprofit organization that was uh, 25 years ago, it was founded by three African-American dietitians. And it was solely for the purpose to develop nutrition education and nutrition resources for um, minorities and underserved populations uh, in the Central Florida area to provide them nutrition education and content to prevent and also manage any kind of chronic diseases like diabetes, obesity, um, high blood pressure, all of the things that mostly minorities are afflicted by, but there's very little representation of minorities in dietetics. So out of all the dietitians in the country, less than 2% are African-American and less than 3% are Latino, but we make up more than one third of all <laughs> chronic diseases, if not more in some cases. So we needed more representation in a way that was more culturally relevant so people could really hear us and we could really speak to those groups. And that's where Hebney came in 25 years ago. And I, you, I do all of the Latino and Hispanic uh, content and education in Spanish and in English or Spanglish, however people prefer it. Uh, here in Central Florida, we have a lot of Caribbean and Latin American people. Uh, we also have a large Haitian population. So we have a Haitian dietitian who works with us. Um, and then we are actually located in a food desert. Our office is in a food desert in a historic African-American community. So we're in the neighborhood and the community that we serve and um, we just love it and they love us. <laughs> so we have no complaints and that's how we were. And I encourage all of you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram because weekly we do wellness lives and we provide um, nutrition content, a lot of recipes because we have a, a demonstration kitchen. So we are recipe heavy about really getting back in the kitchen and cooking and getting back to real food as opposed to um, eating out a lot or eating processed foods. So if you follow us, you'll get all that content. And now thanks to COVID, all of our programming is actually virtual. So you could even join one of our eight weeks or 16 weeks uh, wellness classes, which are completely free because they are grant funded from the comfort of your home. You don't have to be in Orlando anymore. So that's a little bit about Ebony. And myself, I've been with Ebony for four years, almost five years, um, but I've been, I've known them for a long time. Uh, I used to be a nutrition research manager for um, the U.S. Dairy Export Council, so I have a lot of experience on healthy aging and um, healthy aging and um, 
like a lot of malnutrition diseases and how protein supplementation helps with those things. And then um, this was in DC. And then I moved to Florida because I was originally, I grew up here. I'm originally from Puerto Rico, but I grew up in central Florida. I went to high school and college here. So I moved back here and um, I've been with Ebony in one way or another and then full time the last four or five years. Um, before that, I also worked in Miami as a nutrition um, educator and nutrition researcher for the HIV population when I was in grad school. So uh, it's been a long time, Did a lot of nutrition um, community work, got pulled into community by accident, but guess what? Very few dietitians want to do like this community effort to really prevent the chronic diseases and really support uh, community nutrition and community health and wellness. So that's what we're here for. I'm glad to be here and I kinda, if it's okay with Ron, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on our content for today. Fabulous, let's go. Because it's one hour and it's gonna feel like a lot. So if you have a question or you need to stop me, please do so because I do like to hear myself talk and I'm very used to it. So I will go off if nobody stops me, but I'll try to take breaks. So first of all, I want to talk a little bit about, so it's the new year. Still, we're still in the new year. It feels like 2020 was a long time ago, but it's only February. It's almost March. By the end of January, I don't, I mean, most of us know this, but by the end of January, 80% of our, our new year's resolutions are out the window. And by early February, over 90%. So you could have started this year with the best of intentions. Some of us were fortunate enough to during quarantine last year to really kind of like rev up our health and wellness routine because all of a sudden you found yourself with extra time. Some of us did the opposite. We decided to binge watch Netflix and eat more food, which is fine. Um, everybody copes a different way, different ways. And so you maybe took this time, this new year to refresh and start 2021 new and have created some health and wellness goals. And I'm very health and wellness goal oriented in all of my programming. And so is um, so are our founders. So I love for everybody in my classes to develop SMART goals. So, and by SMART, SMART is an acronym, S-M-A-R-T for specific, measurable, attainable, okay? Um, specific, measurable, attainable. Um, and then you need to have the resources for everything and they need to be time-based. So what does that mean? If your new year's resolution was, I wanna lose weight, well, what does losing weight actually look like? What are you really working towards? Are you looking to lose five pounds? Are you looking to lose 10, 50 pounds? And if so, in what time period are you, do you want to do that? So when will you know that you have achieved your goal? Exactly what's your starting off point? What do you want your end point to be? And do you have the resources? Do you have the um, support of your family and of your friends? Uh, I have a lot of people who are like, oh, I want to start working out every day. Okay, do you have a gym membership? No. Can you afford a gym membership? No. Okay, so then how are you going to start working out every day? Is it going to be, I'm going to walk, um, I'm going to get some running shoes and lace up. So you want to make sure a lot of things are aligned and that your goals are very specific and attainable because what happens is we'll say, I want to lose 30 pounds by bikini season because <laughs> we're here in Florida. So bikini season comes early here and um, you it's not only is it not attainable, if you don't have a plan of action by creating a SMART goal, it's, it's gonna be frustrating when you don't see the changes that you wanna see when you wanna see them, okay? So today we're gonna talk a little bit about having that plan of action. And what's really popular is the meal prep. If anybody has ever done like a meal prep subscription or even the like uh, basket subscriptions where you get the ingredients, it is so beneficial and it is so, it, it becomes super handy because you don't have, it takes the guesswork out of, hey, what am I gonna cook for dinner? If there's something that I hate more than anything, and this is coming from a dietitian, I also went to culinary school when I graduated high school. So from somebody who's a professional cook and professional dietitian, there's one thing I hate more than anything is coming home and having somebody above the age of two years old say to me, what's for dinner? It is like, like needle, like needles, like nails on a chalkboard. And I know some of you feel like that. And all I want to do is like take the empty, like stove top pan and just like fling it across the, the living room because it's like not what you want to hear sometimes. It's like, if you're not prepared for that moment, um, it can actually be real, that dinner time can be really stressful. So let's talk about meal prep. How can you make yourself how can you prep your meals at that time without having to put too much extra effort? Because what we don't want is we don't want you to feel like, oh, you have to go way out of your way for this. 
and I'm sorry if you're hearing a child. It's no. just started storming here, and my uh, babysitter just walked in with both of my children. Um, so, as I was saying, um, if you if you want to get prepared, the first thing you need to do is I'm going to send this to Rhonda. This isn't one of my favorites, but it's actually um, a meal plan, a weekly meal plan calendar. And if you look on the left side, this is actually Sunday through Saturday, and it's every day. What are you going to have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And I also like to put in their snacks. If you have snacks as your normal routine of eating, if it's not a normal routine, that's fine. But if it is, then go ahead and add that in there. So everything that you're consuming and or drinking should be on that list. That way there's no surprises. Then you take that list and that's how whatever you need to cook that you don't already have, that's your grocery list for the week. And that's how you build a budget, a grocery budget. And that's also how you just build your grocery list so that way there's no surprises in the middle of the week. That will help. Um, and then another thing you want to do is be a little flexible. So for example, <laughs> this is real life stuff. This is how it happens at home when, when people have to. Yeah, exactly. Well, all of our, all of our um, homes have become the demo kitchens. So um, because we have to shut down after a certain time at the office due to like our in-person programming. So this is really what happens, guys. <laughs> and you would think they would be used to it by now with all the Zooming we do, but it just gets worse and worse. Yeah. I'm gonna have to hold her. Um, <laughs> she's coming, the base is coming to get her. Okay, she had to take her away because she can't handle it if I'm if she sees me on on the Zoom. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. So you wanna use this list to build your grocery list. So what is your weekly planner? Um, I like these printed ones out. It's good for when you're just starting to do this, but now I just use my Google calendar. So I put in there like what I'm gonna cook. And to be honest, I've gotten really good about it. So it's on my Google calendar, but um, there's times where like Wednesday, I'm good Monday through Wednesday and then Thursday and Friday, I fall off of my uh, calendar little wagon, but that's okay because I'm, I'm, I'm used to it. So now I'm prepared. I have other things that I can easily prepare, but what I like about this is that you can also be flexible. So let's say you, okay, I'm going to make lasagna like uh, with ground beef on Wednesday, but as it turns out, ground turkey's on sale, right? It just happened to me last week. Ground turkey was on sale like two for one. Of course, I'm going to buy the ground turkey two for one and make a turkey, ground turkey lasagna as opposed to a ground beef lasagna. And um, of course, I bought like four of them just so I could keep them in my freezer. Uh, but uh, it's good to be a little flexible. If you're somebody who's used to looking at the grocery uh, flyer and you could kind of build your menu off of that, that could be helpful. I like to do that a little bit. Uh, doesn't, I don't always do it. Sometimes I just wing it and go to the store and see what they have on sale. But because I'm so programmed to creating this, um, this weekly menu, I don't, some people do the monthly, which if you could do the monthly, God bless you. I'm not that organized. But if you could do the weekly, that's a huge thing. So for example, on and also double batch cooking whenever you can, I would build that in here. So if you're going to make spaghetti or you're going to make lasagna, for example, um, spaghetti is like one of my favorites to do this with. Like if I'm making spaghetti, today's Monday, I'll make spaghetti tonight. Um, I'm not making spaghetti tonight, but for example, because I'm going to show you what I'm making and you're going to be surprised. Um, it's uh, I'll make like a double batch of spaghetti sauce with the meat in it and everything. And then half goes straight into a freezer Ziploc bag. And then all you have to, so then you have spaghetti sauce ready to go any other day, which is great because then all you have to do is heat that up and cook pasta and you're done. And it's really like less than 20 minutes of cooking. Okay. So you would make half, pop it in your freezer bag and then just lay it flat on a plate, lay it flat on a platter, wherever, put it in the freezer and it turns into like a nice little flat um, packet that you can just pop anywhere in your freezer, especially if you have one of the smaller freezers that are like the under pull, um, like a, in most refrigerators and a lot of the newer types of refrigerators. I have one of those and you don't have a lot of freezer space. So you have to be really smart as to how you're freezing things. Another thing you can do is, um, after you've gotten your grocery list together, 
you've gotten everything, make sure you have all the spices, any salt, pepper, seasonings, make sure that's on your grocery list if you don't have it. Um, another thing you can also do is uh, dub, you can double batch your proteins, like with the spaghetti sauce. You can also double cook, uh, double batch your proteins, like um, chicken. For example, if I'm gonna fire up the grill, if it's Sunday, I'm gonna fire up the grill. I'm gonna grill, like I have a charcoal grill. I don't have like one of the fancy gas ones. So if I'm gonna go through all that trouble, I'm gonna go ahead and grill off a ton of chicken. That's probably gonna last me Monday, Tuesday. And I could probably, I'll still have probably some to freeze and eat at a later time. I uh, have an issue in my household. And some of you probably have this issue where like my family will eat. And when I say my family, I mean, my husband will eat leftovers, but after eating it once, he doesn't want it like a third time, right? So he's like, this is too much. I don't need to eat the same grilled chicken or the same pasta sauce three days in a row. So he'll eat it once. And so the, the rest I'll freeze and maybe use the next week or a week after that. It doesn't matter as long as you break it up a little bit or even later in the week. Okay. So if you're going to go through the trouble of doing something like firing up your grill, throw some extra stuff on there and then you can have a grilled chicken or a grilled um, beef or whatever it is that you put on there later in the week and use it for something like tacos, fajitas. It's all about repurposing. What I like to do if I don't double batch protein is I kind of pick and choose. Like I just happen to have a ton of chicken. Let me go ahead and cook all this chicken off on Sunday. Um, I like to pre-cook grains, okay? So for example, and then I put them in plastic bags and pop them in the freezer. So for example, here I have um, a bag of quinoa that's frozen. And what's great about quinoa is that it can double as a, it can double as a protein and a grain. So if it's, if I don't have anything to eat for lunch for myself or for my kids in their lunchbox, this is a great way to throw, heat some of this up with some veggies or leftover protein or throw some tuna on it. And you have like a salad or puts, make a salad and throw like a big half cup of quinoa in there. And you have a big hearty lunch, a big hearty salad that you can eat from. And you didn't really put that much effort into it. It's good if you buy like the pre-bagged salads, that just makes it that much easier. And this is a having something like quinoa ready to go is great because it's super nutrient packed and that extra protein, it kind of makes up for anything that your meal may be lacking nutrient wise. So there are certain things that I really like to have on hand and it's an extra grain and extra protein in the freezer at all times. Cause it will, there, there is times when I have nothing to eat like today, um, cause it's been a crazy couple of weeks at our office. And I have to look at my freezer and see what I have. And I just so happen to have um, a big uh, container of cooked beans because we did a demo last week in the office on how to cook dry beans in 20, 30 minutes and you use a pressure cooker. So what you do is um, you take the dry beans and you cook them in a pressure cooker and in 20, 30 minutes, they're done, soft, ready to go. So we take I took the big container, stuck that in my freezer, and today we're having bean burritos for dinner because guess what? Like all of your meals don't have to be like five-star Michelin rated meals, okay? They don't have to look like something out of a, a Weight Watchers commercial or, or something out of a food network. They just have to be like nourishing for your family. And beans are a superfood. If you use a whole wheat tortilla, more power to you. You can put a little cheese on it, put salad, uh, like a salad on the side or some roasted veggies, or you can even just do like salsa on the side for dipping, like kids prefer that or guacamole. Um, and you can even put like vegetables inside the actual burrito. So not all of the meals are gonna be five-star meals, but they're gonna be good and they're gonna be nourishing for your family. Um, and also why I like the beans, which I talked about, when we did the demo last week is because if you eat half a cup of beans a day, you actually extend your livelihood by a few years. So beans are like a longevity food. And we know that uh, people who eat beans regularly live longer lives, but they also have better, um, they also have better brain cognitive function and they have less occurrences of Alzheimer's and of dementia later in life. So yeah, they live longer and, but they also live better longer. They're not just surviving at an older age. They're actually living very, um, very functional uh, lives at very old ages. And it's one of the blue zones. Um, if you guys are familiar with the blue zones, that's one of those, um, one of their rules is to eat half a cup of beans every day, okay?
So uh, I, that's part of my New Year's resolution, having the beans of eating more plant-based. So that's another thing we could talk about if anybody has a question about that. Um, slowly becoming plant-based expert. So if anybody has a question, we could talk about that and that's super helpful. And then also for meal prep, I'm gonna show you how this looks. You can buy, we just purchased some of these. These are silicone bags. You can get them on Amazon or you can get them at Walmart or any local store. And they're just silicone freezer bags. So instead of spending money on the, on the freezer bags that are plastic, this is super convenient because you can toss them. But every time I buy them, I realize, wow, they are not cheap, okay? And whether you're buying the store brand or the name brand, they are not cheap. And eventually like you're tossing money in the trash. So I've been more and more, and we have been in the office using more reusable stuff. So this is like a freezer, a freezer, reusable freezer bag. And it's good for soups and liquids. I like it because it stands up. This is actually cooked. This is actually frozen garbanzos, chickpeas from another bean demo that I did. Um, I think it's messed up that they make the Hispanic person cook beans, but I'm okay with it. Um, so it's a, another bean demo I did. So this is cooked garbanzos. Um, and this is great because there's actually four cups of garbanzos in here. So this is enough to feed my entire family of four. So this with, I could just heat this up and they're already like stewed and ready to go. I could just heat this up and cook some brown rice and that could be another dinner. Okay. Perfectly, perfectly nutritious dinner. Okay. I actually want to show you another one that we just got. These little things we got on Amazon, they're silicone freezer meal prep. Um, containers. And what I like about them is that these are individual, but like here is like a squash and garbanzo bean um, soup. So like you could just pop this guy out. You're giving me great ideas for giveaways. I'm, yeah. I'm and this you can just pop straight into your Tupperware and just keep, you don't even have to refrigerate it. By the time lunchtime comes around, um, it's melted and just ready to heat up. So you don't have to worry like if your office doesn't have refrigeration, or if you're going to be out and about, it could just sit on uh, in a Tupperware. And by the time it's ready to eat, to have lunch, it's ready to go. So I love it because the one just pops out. And like um, my son is, I have a son who's five and he is a self-proclaimed vegetarian. <laughs> so I find myself freezing a lot of small portion of beans for him um, because he has like a, he actually has a texture problem. So meats and chicken and things like that, he can't really um they're not palatable for him so he's a vegetarian by what is that called again selena these are called soup super cubes but soup like a soup s-o-u-p-e-r so amazon we could find it at amazon or yeah something. they're on they're from amazon and then they have bigger ones too so you could get the bigger size and i love that they come with lids because then they're super easy to stack in the freezer um so they stack really nice you see and it's cool and this right here just these two this is a ton of food. If you were to fill this up with soup, let's say you made a big veggie batch of soup, or if you made like pasta sauce and you just wanted individual servings of the pasta sauce, you could do that too. Um, this is one, this is four. Actually, each one of these could be two servings, but this is four and this is two each one of these, okay? So you're talking about eight servings of food in just these two little things. So that's great. Um, and they, I've tried them out. They're dishwasher safe, which I'm. it's very, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> and they wash up really nice. But a lot of these silicone products now are actually really great. I was skeptical about them, but they're great. I love them. And they do end up saving you money because I was just at the store yesterday. And I was amazed at how much you pay for like all the plastic bags. I'm like when they, these things get so expensive and for double the price, you could get some of these containers, but they last you indefinitely, okay? All right, so any questions on like storing food, freezing food, meal prep um well you have a question in here you you mentioned plant-based i don't know if this is too early but okay. we do have a question um uh my husband is italian he's a meat lover but i'm i'm interested in eating more plant-based diet okay so i actually can um sympathize with this person because my husband is from argentina which is the largest like consumer of beef on the planet they have more cows than they do humans on their in their country so they're like uh they eat steak over there like we eat chicken um so chicken is expensive over there chicken is for parties over there so um i get that and i have that issue so what you want to do is you want to just like honestly don't talk about it that much 
just, we always say like, keep your secrets. Okay. So whatever you're making for your, try to just slowly add in more vegetables to your already built in protein. So if you're going to make meat or beef, whatever, add a heavier portion of vegetables to that and start that way. Okay. Because then you're, and then you can start seeing how he reacts to that. And if he is, pretty okay. Like pick a day to make something where he may not notice there's no vegetables in no, um, animal protein in it. Like, um, like a vegetable curry or like a vegetarian, um, chili, which we actually have a really great recipe for that. And, um, one of my, our founders, you're going to see in the next few weeks, she has a great recipe for that. She makes a vegetarian barley chili that you will not miss the meat. Um, I make this chickpea butternut squash curry that is the first time I got one of the first meals I got to eat my meat eating husband. And he was like, Oh, I don't even miss the meat. And I served it with brown rice. It was like super hearty. So you just have to see how he reacts to having more vegetables on his plate with animal proteins and then slowly incorporate an all veggie meal here or there. And, so, and you, then you can start decreasing the portions that way. We're going to move. We're going to talk about vegetable portions in a minute. Okay. So if there's any other question, I hope that it gave you an idea. And if it didn't, um, I'll come up with something else, <laughs> I'm sure, because I'm always coming up with tricks. I definitely don't announce that we're having a vegetarian meal. Um, if, I'm trying, if I'm trying to make something that's hearty and veggie for my family, I don't make an announcement that it's a vegetarian meal because I will already get like prejudice <laughs> um, before the meal is done. So don't, uh, do not, uh, give your secrets away. Just go ahead, uh, uh, go ahead and make it and see how he reacts. I like it. I have three questions, but I'm not sure if I should tell you now or later. You want them now? You me, no, you can tell me now. Okay. So one, and this came with registration. One is tips. I need tips to stop stress eating. Hmm. The second one is, and you may have answered the second one, shortcuts for meal prepping. Okay. And the third one is how would I accommodate ethnic foods? I am Puerto Rican and we haven't been eating plantains very often because we're avoiding fried food, but I, I live for, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to talk about this. Okay. So the first, the first question was how, what was the first question? Sorry. How do, and it said, how do I, I'm going to just make it general. This whole, oh, how do I not stress? How, eat? Do, we, how do we stop stress eating? Because yeah. I think we're all guilty here. Okay. So the stress eating is you have to just be prepared for starters. Stress eating starts one when you don't have a plan. Okay. So sometimes what can happen is you may not have had an idea of what you're eating for lunch, or you don't know exactly know what you're eating for dinner. And in the meantime, you may start eating other things because you're stressed out because you're busy because you're that you have to, we have to find ways to sub, to kind of substitute that moment. You have to recognize it first. So, you know, you're stress eating, right? Are you sitting down watching TV and eating? something are you when is it exactly usually we stress eat like around the same times so if you know like i'm stress eating right now then you're able to recognize that that's that's already amazing because most of us can't recognize when we're stress eating we just it's kind of um it doesn't it's like mind numbing action like you don't realize that your hand has been moving close to your mouth <laughs> like it, it you really it doesn't register so the fact that you're doing that is already great now what can you do in that moment if it's, let's say it's between meals and not time for you to eat yet, can you do something to distract yourself? Because all you really need is a couple of minutes of distraction and it actually pushes you through that um, moment of stress. So what's something that will help you cope with that stress to not eat? For me is, and this is going to sound silly, but I jump rope. So I actually have like an exercise jump rope and I keep it in my bag all the time. So when I'm starting to get, cause we, I'm a dietitian, but guess what? I love to eat and I like to stress, I stress eat too sometimes. And we, sometimes we, because we have a test kitchen and a demo kitchen, um, we have food available all the time. So it's very easy to get caught up in eating all the time. So like this week we're doing a big thing about, um, ethnic foods and like grits in particular and, um, different types of porridges. And I hope you guys log in Wednesday for that and how different types of porridges are in the Caribbean versus African-American diet. So um, that'll be really fun. But as a result, we've been testing out different grits and porridge recipes. So like we end up tasting and eating a lot of stuff. So when I find myself stressed out or I'm super busy, instead of reaching for like chocolate or something, I try to stop myself. It doesn't work all the time. And I start jumping rope for a few minutes 
or sometimes um, I will find something else to do. Uh, for some people, it's like scrolling through social media, which I don't recommend because that actually stresses you out more. So it's like taking a step back. Maybe you need to meditate for a couple of minutes. That seems to work really well. Taking some deep breaths, closing your eyes. Um, what is the noise uh, that people listen to, the calming, soothing stuff people listen to now for a few seconds? If you, if you know every day at like 2.30 or 3, you're like stressed and it's time for you to go reach for the candy bar and the coffee or the cold latte, caramel latte, then um, those are times when you can build in activities to distract you. Another thing is that you could do is just make sure to eat stress, eat something healthy. So for me, my stress eating um, vice is uh, blueberries or some other kind of berry because they will, especially like at night, I get, I'll get hungry if I'm up late working. So instead of like sitting on my laptop in front of the TV, eating like popcorn or chips or something, I will just have something that gives you that hand to mouth satisfaction. And usually something like blueberries or like cut up strawberries or just some cut up fruit gives me that hand to mouth satisfaction. And I feel satisfied without like destroying my diet. Because sometimes, guess what? You are hungry for whatever reason. Stress causes hunger, okay? So sometimes you do need to eat something, but you need to make sure that it's something healthy and not something unhealthy. And also I will say the last thing with that is don't keep junk food in the house um, because that is a big, <laughs> that is one of the big things that will save you. You will get used to not having junk food in the house. It will be so hard at first. And you, especially nowadays, you will find yourself looking for the closest Uber to like bring you something, but um, try not to keep stuff in the house. And that really does help you with that keep make sure you're prepared though so you have things like I always make sure I have the blueberries or have something like that that I can reach for and I think about it when I'm at the store I'm like oh I need to buy these blueberries because I know I'm going to get hungry later and when I'm up late working and I know that this will like get me through that moment okay so like think about that what are some things that you could do in that moment for that okay so that's what I'll say about that I hope that gives you ideas, I hope. If not, you guys can always ask me questions via Rhonda. She can send me any questions you have. I just wanna let you know, and even after today, and I can help you with any questions you have. We're totally here to help you in any way possible. Um, the second question was, Rhonda. Oh wait, uh, you're muted, you're muted. Okay, shortcuts to meal prepping and then, um... So I remember the last one. So the shortcuts to meal prepping, double cooking, double batching, it uh, will save your life. You're cooking spaghetti, so spaghetti sauce. You're making spaghetti today with like meat sauce, make two batches of meat sauce, immediately take half and st stick it in your bag and stick it in the freezer. You have spaghetti for another day. Um, on Sundays, I always like to double cook a protein. So like I'll roast two entire chickens because we'll eat like half a chicken or maybe a little more since my son and my young daughter don't eat chicken. And then I have like enough chicken for multiple days. So then you can make chicken sandwiches, chicken salads, tacos, quesadillas, uh, chicken, just chicken on, with a salad on top, on sa a salad on the side. So I like to make sure I double cook whenever I can. So, you know, my, your oven has two racks in it. You can put two chickens in there, especially if you cut them open and butterfly them. Um, and also you can also buy them like that, but I feel like it costs more than it's worth. Um, and then also double batching, uh, your grains is good. I only really double batch cook my, um, quinoa, anything, all the other greens are cooked so fast that to me, I don't find it necessary, but, um, also like double batch cooking vegetables. For example, if tonight I'm going to make roasted, um, broccoli, I'll double, I'll make extra because in the morning I can have that roasted broccoli with like an egg white omelet, or I can have it as like in a frittata. And I like to always make extra vegetables to make sure I have vegetables for the next day for breakfast or for lunch. Okay. So think about that when you're uh, meal, meal planning for the week, like what can you double batch to have for lunch the next day, or maybe later in the week? Like if I cooked two chickens yesterday, I'll eat some today. Um, which I didn't cause I didn't prepare this week, but I'll eat them today. And then I'll maybe have a chicken salad later in the week. Okay. To try and break it up. But that gives you like enough protein for a good amount of dates. Okay. And then how can you build in some plant-based proteins in there? Maybe you have a bean chili day. Okay. Or maybe you have a veggie soup day or like some lentils and brown rice day. Okay. So those kinds of things will also help you first of all, lower your monthly budget by adding more um, plant-based meals and more plant-based proteins, you'll lower your monthly grocery bill. 
And also by doing your meal prep, you'll be amazed at how much you're saving because what people don't think about when they are looking at their food budget that they spend in the grocery store, they're looking at like, oh, I spent this amount of money at the grocery store. Okay, you spend this amount of money feeding yourself. But think about add to that every time you bought food at a restaurant, you bought a snack in a can in a in a vending machine, if you bought a coffee, all of those things should go to your grocery budget also, because yeah, they're they're eating out and all of those things, but they're to feed you and to nourish you. So when you add that into it, then you realize, wait a minute, <laughs> my food bill is actually out of control. So if you can plan everything, you'll actually start eating out less. Not that there's anything wrong with eating out, but we do have to control. We do need to control a little bit what's in our food. And that's a really good way of doing it. Okay. And I hope that answered your question. I don't know who asked it, but I hope that was useful. Okay. And double batch cooking, I swear by it, trust me. That's why I just showed you three different meals. I could feed my family tonight, but we're having bean burritos instead <laughs> because I have way too many frozen beans in my fridge. Um, and so another, uh, the last question was uh, ethnic foods. So I am also Puerto Rican and I actually have plantains in my house right now in the background somewhere. Maybe there's no, no, there's no plantains. So you don't have to not eat plantains. The problem with, um, things like a plantain is that it is a starchy vegetable. So it's a carbohydrate. And what happens a lot with uh, Caribbean food and Latin American food, um, and you see it in Italian food sometimes, Italian American food is that we eat way too many, um, it's starting, it's storming pretty bad here, but uh, you guys can't hear it yet. Um, the two to three carbs, starchy carbs per meal, okay? So what happens is, it's like if you're eating spaghetti with a basket of breadsticks on the side, that's multiple carbs, starchy carbs you're eating in one meal, okay? So we wanna take it down to one carb. And what Hispanic do, and it's particularly Puerto Rican people, I speak for myself, is that we will eat rice, okay? With a protein, a meat protein, with beans. Beans also have carbohydrates in them, by the way. It's a starchy carb, but it's super healthy carb. So we don't consider it like a starch per se, because it also has a lot of protein. So you'll have beans, you'll have rice, you'll have your meat protein. And then on the side, you'll it, on top of that, we'll have fried plantains, bread, and in some cases, like another, even another carb, okay? So you anywhere from three to five to six carbs in one meal. So you wanna think about if I'm gonna have plantains, I'm gonna eat them, I'm, that's, that's it. I'm not eating plantains and rice, okay? I'm just eating plantains. All right, you, you can also bake them, especially if you like to eat the sweet ones, you can just put them on a baking sheet and you bake them at 375, you spray them with like a little oil on top and on the bottom, and that will um, bake them really, really, really nicely. And it actually gives them like a stronger plantain flavor when they come out, as opposed to deep frying them where they can have more of an oily flavor. And then another thing you could do is if you like them green, when they're not sweet, you can pan fry them. Um, so you can pan fry them real quickly. You usually smush them and then you cook them a second time. And so you can pan fry them the second time also, or you can air fry them. And I'm actually working on a video for this because one of my Hispanic and Latino classes that are going on right now, they really want like an air fryer demo of Hispanic foods. So I'm working on a video with our marketing director on this because I actually have an air fryer. You guys can't see it, it's off screen. Um, and I, I, it's, a, it's actually a toaster oven, it's not an air fryer. Um, it just pretends to be an air fryer, but um, it, it was, works the same. So um, I hope that, it doesn't mean you can't eat your foods, just to make sure you're eating the right amounts of them, the portions, okay? And also not like double batching your carbs, not having two or three starchy carbs in one meal, spread it out. Also, it saves you money. I love it when I see like a little, I have a, a Hispanic grocery store, a Caribbean store right up the street from here. And I'll go grocery shopping and um, you'll see somebody buy like 10 different like starchy vegetables and a bag of rice. And it's like, that's their Sunday meal. Okay, that's not even like food for multiple days. But if you spread that out, you would actually be saving money. So it's important to kind of spread it out to also help us save money, not just save carbs, okay? And I hope that answered your question. And if she wants more specific stuff, she can always contact me also. Okay, Rhonda? Okay, now let's talk about any other questions before I move forward, because I want to talk about troubleshooting weight loss a little bit. 
Um, and that can get a little, it's, it's already, I feel like it's already been a lot of information. I'm hearing myself a lot. So I feel like it's already been a lot of information. No, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So let's talk about troubleshooting weight loss. So if your weight, if your new year's resolution was to lose weight, that is fantastic. You probably feel like for some reason you have to lose weight. Maybe your physician told you you needed to lose weight and maybe you're feeling like, okay, I'm not getting anywhere with this weight loss. We need to start with a plan. You can start with a meal prep if you want. What's your plan? A lot of the times what I see people doing is they go in hard with the exercise, which is great. Um, exercise does not lead to weight loss. Uh, unlike, unlike popular belief, um, actually exercise is not good for weight loss. And a research study just came out this week, last week how, showing how it, weight loss is not one of the benefits of exercise. Exercise is amazing for everything else. It's amazing for expanding your your life, your life, your lifespan. It helps you prevent diabetes. It helps with um, glucose uptake and decreases your insulin resistance. It uh, can reverse osteoporosis. It can um, prevent or reverse dementia and Alzheimer's. It can um, reverse hypertension. It can decrease your cholesterol. It can do everything that you need to exercise basically. Okay. There's no reason for all of nobody to not exercise. Okay. Even if you're chair wheelchair bound, you could still find, um, exercises that are appropriate for you. Moving your body is the most important thing for chronic disease prevention and management. Okay. Now for weight loss, like 85 to 90% of it is what you eat. Okay, so especially with women, we see a lot where they're exercising, 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 and they're not seeing like the scale change. Now, your body composition is changing. So you're noticing that your pants fit better. Okay, they're a little looser. That skirt fits nicer because now your body composition is shifting. You're making more muscle. Things are getting held up a little nicer. And that's because of the exercise. So that's why exercise is so important, especially weight bearing exercises for women because they prevent and reverse osteoporosis, okay? So exercise is important. If you wanna lose weight though, we have to focus on the food. If it's important, and by lose weight, I mean that you get on that scale and you wanna see the number go down, okay? So there's, a, there's, a, there's an important caveat here is that some people are okay with their clothes fitting better. Going from a four, size, size 14 to a size 12, but you're the same weight, you're, fine, you're happy with that, okay? But some people really need the number to change. They really need that number to go down, okay? And I understand that. And that's where like the food, really managing your food and what you're eating is what you need to understand. So first of all, if you wanna track your food, that's a really good idea. Um, there's a lot of really good apps. I really like my fitness pal. It's an oldie, but a goodie um, because they have every single food item you can imagine in there and you can build your own recipes, um, and kind of track what you're eating just to see what you're eating. I don't recommend doing that for long periods of time, but it gives you like a big picture. It gives you a picture of like what you're doing and you realize, Oh, wait a minute, this is what's happening. Um, if you're a woman and, or you're the main food preparer at your, in your home, chances are, is that while you're cooking, you're also eating. And that's also like a big, that's one of those moments where you don't realize you're eating, but you're eating because you're hungry. Cause you probably didn't eat enough or in the earlier, earlier in the day, or you ate foods that really didn't nourish you long enough. So now you're hungry and you're struggling to make food and you're fighting off toddlers. So, um, you're eating and drinking wine. So you're having calories. So those are all things that you need to kind of help you look at if you're tracking what you eat, okay? So one thing you know is you can track what you eat. Another thing is you can rethink your goal. Is my goal weight loss? Do I need to see the number go down? Or is my goal um, being fitter or being able to do something else or decreasing my blood pressure or decreasing my blood glucose or uh, decreasing my cholesterol? What is really the goal, the goal for you? Whenever possible, I really am a strong believer of not worrying about your weight because what happens is um, if you making wellness changes that are in the right direction, the weight is going to be a, the weight loss is going to be a byproduct of that. So I don't want people to focus on the weight loss. The weight loss will come when you're eating better, when you're following some of the stuff we're talking about, when you're following those things, the weight loss will happen. And sometimes we need to just stop stressing out about the weight loss and refocus. What is it that I'm really trying to do here? Okay. 
Am I, am I trying to fit in a bikini or am I trying to not get on insulin? Okay. So what is it that you're trying to do? It happens a lot with minorities is that uh, we get um, in denial about how at risk we are about certain things like diabetes. So I have like a lot of mid 30 clients who call and they're like, oh, my cholesterol is high. My this is high. My, my blood pressure. I'm getting put on medications. I'm getting put on statins. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, but like, look how you're eating, right? So maybe you're eating out every single meal of the day because you're not cooking at all at home. So maybe your goal needs to be like, let me figure out how to cook a little and see if I can make some better changes in my life. And then now you're taking one step in the direction that you want and weight loss will be a byproduct of that, okay? So sometimes it's about refocusing our energy. That's, that's really, especially for women, because women's weight can shift anywhere from two to five, six pounds per day, depending on, um, depending on your hormone shift and also depending on just like water retention. So that's another big thing. Don't get, don't get bogged down by what you see on the scale on a daily, because today you may be one number and tomorrow you may be three numbers up, but guess what? Those genes still fit. So you're good. Okay. Like, don't worry about those numbers. It's really about how you're feeling and how um, the real numbers are, which is blood pressure, cholesterol. Those are the things that matter. Okay. We have this good advice. Can I, can I uh, in, interject a question? Someone ha has a question about intermittent fasting and, and this is from a woman and I know there's research or not much research on it for women, but we want to know what you have to say about intermittent fasting. Um, intermittent fasting works for some people. The thing is, is it something that you think you could do forever? The only research on both intermittent fasting and keto that has come out that is um, a little bit more long-term is that they don't really have more weight loss than just doing like more tightening up your, your food, like making smaller portions and making healthier meal choices. They actually don't, over long periods of time, you actually don't lose more weight. It can be not significant. It can be just two or three more pounds. But what they did notice is that the percent of weight that those people lost, part of that weight loss was actually protein loss, not fat loss. Okay. So yeah, that number's going down, but you're losing protein. And when you're losing protein, that means you're losing muscle. Okay. So muscle keeps you young. Muscle is what keeps you living longer. It keeps you living a healthy, a healthy aging. It's what keeps you flexible. It's what keeps you having a better quality of life as you age. Everybody starts losing muscle naturally at the age of like 30, 35, and it's a process called sarcopenia, so muscle loss, as opposed to osteopenia, which is bone loss. Um, and, and people who are on keto actually also experience bone loss. So there's, uh, I worked on a study where uh, keto actually was first found and it was used for um, seizure patients. And yeah, it works great if you're on a seizure, if you have seizures and epilepsy, certain type of epilepsy, but those kids after six months had bone loss. Okay. So they already had like some osteoporosis because of um, that ketosis actually puts your body in a position where you're leaking, you're leaching out calcium for your bones. Okay. So that's really important thing to remember. So these are all okay. If you're doing them in the short term, cause you're looking for like a quick weight loss. And that's why doctors recommend them because doctors are all about the numbers. Okay. So if you go to your doctor and he tells you you need to lose weight, keto is going to make you lose weight, lose weight. A lot of doctors recommend um, bi bariatric surgeries because guess what? After bariatric surgery, they're just looking at the number. So they know that like if a patient goes into an operating room weighing 300 pounds in a couple of weeks, he'll be weighing 200 pounds. So that's a positive outcome for them. Okay. Forget the fact that you just had major surgery on your abdomen, but like, that's what they're looking at. So if you need to do, so they'll recommend keto and they'll recommend fasting because of that. But what I don't want to see is I don't want to see you losing muscle. I don't want to see you losing bone because that affects the quality of your life as we age. Okay. So it's not that those things are, I mean, in the short term, it's fine, but you don't want to, if that's not something you're going to keep up forever, then you, we need to start thinking about how can we make those changes in our lives regularly. All of us should be intermittent fasting, by the way. So if you, if you eat dinner two to three hours before you go to sleep, and then you rest because rest is super, you're not going to lose weight if you don't sleep. Okay. So if you could eat perfect, and have a stressful life. And if you're not sleeping, you're not going to lose a pound. That's another thing, ladies, <laughs> like you're not going to lose a pound. So, um, if you, let's say you stop eating two to three hours before dinner, and then you go to sleep eight hours, maybe you have breakfast an hour after you wake up, you've just fasted for 12 hours. Okay. And that's what you're supposed to do. That's why breakfast is called breakfast, break the fast. Right. So you should be fasting overnight. 
That's what your body needs that time to rest. It needs your digestive system needs to heal. It needs to recuperate. So it's super important um, to make sure that you're, oh, I'm about to lose battery. Sorry, hold on. <laughs> That's why it's super important that you are not eating two to three hours before bedtime. If you have any kind of um, diabetes or blood sugar control, or you are on medication that makes your blood sugar really low in the mornings, then that's maybe where you want, you're the, you're the exception to that particular rule, but no, there's really no reason to eat two to three hours before your, before your bedtime, okay? Is that, does that help? Is that answer the question? <laughs> That's great, great information. Okay, but I have I don't have anything against um, the particular diets. I just don't like the the other side effects. Okay. I know some people are like on a crash diet situation and they need to crash diet, so those things may work in in the moment. But just. Don't be surprised when you stop the diet and the wake all comes right back. Okay, that's just, all, that's the only other thing I wanna say. All right, so we're gonna move on to talk about how to kind of, how to kind of implement some small changes to your diet to help you with that ultimate goal of weight loss, okay? And I know you all probably know this, but like years ago, if you guys remember the food pyramid, how it was like the pyramid and you had like the grains on the bottom and the fat was like the top part of the pyramid. And then like in, in 2000, they changed it. So it was like a more obscure pyramid. And there was like a guy walking up the side to show that you have to exercise. And there was like a thing for water. And so the pyramid was always very controversial because um, they felt like it didn't really speak to the people in a way that was like, okay, what am I supposed to do with this pyramid? Okay. So it was like not practical. All right. So they changed it to my plate in 2010. And uh, my plate is literally like a picture of a plate and it shows you that, I have a plate here, that a quarter of your plate should be protein. So your protein should go here, okay, not here. So if you have a plate like this, your protein should go here, not here. <laughs> and your um, carbohydrate should go here. And this whole area is for vegetables and fruit, okay? So if you look at it like this, and also the my plate shows that you need to have dairy with every meal. You don't need to have dairy with every meal. Just I'm just letting you all know. I just I I, I don't appreciate that they put that on there. But like you don't need to have dairy with every meal. If you like dairy, more power to you. But you don't have some of us can't have dairy, so don't feel like you have to supplement for with dairy every meal. Okay. So this is protein. So if you wanted to eat a Popeye's two piece, if you could take the bone off and fit it here then you are good. And it can't be higher than the plate either, guys. So anything you can fit here is your protein, all right? Now, we wanna control our fried foods, correct? So we're not trying to eat fried chicken all the time, but if you, when you're gonna have it, because it's a family reunion, because it's a, July, it's a special occasion, you're at grandma's house, whatever it is, you wanna have it, just don't, like, make sure that you wanna control the portion that you're having, okay? So right here. Doesn't mean you can't have any foods. You just need to control how much you're eating and how often, all right? Your carbohydrate is here. So if your carbohydrate is rice, all right? Like my people like to do, um, we make this our rice portion and it's not just like flat, we make it like this. If I give my father this plate and put his rice here, he is bound to just disown me as his child and, take, and raise me out of his will, okay? Just so you know. But um, rice, cooked rice should be half a cup. So this is called a spoodle. And we use these in all our classes. We give them to all our participants. We also give them the plate. Um, but the spoodle is a half cup, four ounces. That's how much rice, cooked rice you wanna eat. Um, cooked pasta, that's right, I said cooked pasta, okay? Um, and any other starchy carb, like a potato, uh, four ounces. Uh, sweet potato, also four ounces. Plantains, plantains, four ounces. That's about half a plantain per person, unless they're small, unless they're really small. Usually you get them bigger though. Um, the same with any starchy carb. So that's that four ounce serving, okay? Uh, if you're eating like a whole grain pasta, you could have a little, there's like protein pastas now. You can make that half of your plate. If it's the protein pasta, with like vegetables and a little protein, like a mixed dish, then that's half your plate. And then 
Still, the most important part is that half of our plate needs to be vegetables and fruit. Why? Because we realize in this country, the USDA changed these regulations, these regulations, because we realize in this country that um, chronic diseases and can cancers, preventable nutrition related cancers are so common and they can be prevented by eating more fruits and vegetables. Okay, let me, let me say that again. You can prevent certain cancers by eating more fruits and vegetables because of the high fiber and high antioxidant content that they have. Cancers like colon cancer, even some skin cancers, okay? Um, pancreatic cancers, esophageal cancers. There's a lot of cancers that can be prevented by just eating a heavy, heavy fruit and veggie-based diet. This is plant-based, folks. Okay, this is plant-based because your starchy carb is usually a plant and this is all plants, right? You're just eating a protein that may be an animal product. We like to think about plant-based meat foods as like, oh, I'm a, I'm a vegan, I'm a vegetarian. You don't need to be a vegan or a vegetarian. You just need to be plant slanted or plant heavy, okay? So like when you're building your um, grocery list to kind of bring it back around, right? When you're building your weekly menu, Build it around the vegetables. Build it around your healthy carbs and your healthy starches. I just um, did a class last week about carbs, the bad rep that carbs get. Carbs aren't bad. The problem is that we eat so many carbs per meal, okay? If you had a sandwich in the morning or if you had some eggs with toast, um, that's one carb, but you maybe had something else, who knows? Then if you had like a snack of a donut, or a muffin, there's carbs there. If you had any candy or anything sweet, those are all carbs. If for lunch you had a sub, that's usually like two to three carbs, sometimes four or five carbs if it was like a foot long sub. Or if you had a couple slices of pizza, that's multiple carb servings right there. One carb serving is 15 grams, okay? A slice of bread is usually about 20 to 25 grams, right? So one carb serving is 15 grams. So that's like a bunch of carbs just by lunchtime. Then dinner, let's say you have pasta, breadsticks, that's multiple carbs because we're not eating just a little bit of pasta, right? We're eating like a nice bowl of pasta. Or if you go to Olive Garden, do the all you can eat, never endless pasta with the breadsticks. That's another thing too, right? <laughs> so you got to think about how many carbs we're eating. And then can we reduce those carbs? But can we also switch them to healthier carbs, whole grains? Whole, whole grain rice. There's a lot of really great pasta um, products out there. Like Barilla makes a protein pasta. I just started buying it for our clients. They love it. It's great. It's for kids that we did it and they love it because you can't tell the difference. It looks white pasta, but it's made with like some chickpea flour, um, some legume flour. And so it has a higher protein content, which is great. There's a lot of really good pasta products out there that you can try instead of um, trying regular pot, white pasta. So let's switch our carbs to healthy carbs. Okay. And let's decrease the portions. That's a huge deal. All right. Questions? Questions? I think I saw some stuff popping up in the chat. So I don't know if there was a question. I just see, uh, no, it's a couple of people saying, thank you. This is a great session. We need another one and we will have another one, Melissa. There'll be another one coming up in a couple of weeks. You'll see that on our website and our social media site. Some of the people have to leave favorite resources for plant-based recipes. Ooh. See, I want to say Ebony Nutrition Consultants is my favorite, <laughs> but um, actually some, I really, um, we're, cause we do, I, I'm the plant-based person for the recipes there. I make a lot of plant-based recipes, but um, I really follow the Blue Zones a lot. And I really like a lot of the recipes on their website. They have really great recipes. Um, and if you just Google different plant-based recipes, it's really great. I, to start off with, I like to try a lot of curries. So if you have like an Asian store or like an Asian Pacific store in your area or an Indian store in your area, they have like pre-made curries and you can um, buy them green curries, yellow curries. They have sweet, they don't, they're not all spicy. So don't think that they're spicy because they're not because um, I give them the small children and they're not spicy. Uh, that's a great way to start plant-based because it's such strong flavor, flavorful. You make it with coconut milk and it's nice and heavy and thick on your stomach and you serve that over some rice, especially brown rice. And it's like a nice heavy hearty meal. And I usually do it with like a squash as the vegetable and some beans, like a white bean or a garbanzo bean, something that's lighter in color. Um, and that is like a really, and then you can throw in bell peppers and onions and just really load it up heavy veggie. Um, and it ends up being like a super hearty, but that's my, that's like my gateway um, veggie meal for people is usually some kind of veggie curry. Okay. And you know what? 
I did a demo on it a long time ago. And if I find the link on Facebook for it, I'll send it to Rhonda so she can forward it to you guys. Because I we did it like last year at the beginning of quarantine and somebody just brought it up the other day. They were like, oh, you remember when you guys made that butternut squash curry? And I was like, yes, I will look for that link. Uh, and I'll send it to Rhonda so that way you guys can see that. But that's kind of like a gateway, a gateway for most people, okay? I have another question in the yes. chat. What do you say about jackfruit? Jackfruit is great. Um, jackfruit is great, but I will say this. If you want to eat more plant-based, don't do it by eating super processed vegan foods, okay? So be careful with like the very processed like jackfruit pretending to be pulled pork. I never understood why um, vegans needed vegetables to pretend to be meat. Because if you're being a vegan, you're eating, you're purposely not eating meat. I don't need a fruit to pretend to be pulled pork. Cause for that, I will eat pulled pork. Just pretend to be a jackfruit. I will still eat you. So um, just be careful when it comes to processed vegan products or processed um, vegetarian products, because sometimes you look at that ingredient list in the back and you're actually seeing a highly processed, highly chemical packed, sodium packed, sugar packed product palm oil that they use a lot, which is not ethically sourced usually. And also palm oil is like the highest saturated fat from a plant on the planet and coconut oil are used heavy. So they're like heavy, heavy fats that add calories. So if weight loss is your ultimate goal, you gotta be careful with those processed vegan products because you're getting calories that you didn't even realize you're getting, but you think you're being healthy, right? So make sure that that's a big thing. Um, I love it. I think it's great. If you like to eat it, it's great. It's just, jackfruit is actually a super fruit. So as long as you're not heavy with the sodium and processing to package it, I think it's great. Great tip. You know, I noticed that too about a lot of the uh, uh, vegetarian uh, options. They're high in fat. High in fat. It, yeah. Or yeah. it must be so they can be flavorful. Yeah. Any other questions in the chat? Okay, any questions, comments, concerns, um, please like reach out to Rhonda um, and she'll either put you in contact with us one way or another. Um, now that we can Zoom, now that we're all Zoom professionals, um, we can really um, connect any way that you guys want. And I really encourage you to follow us on our Facebook, uh, MD Nutrition Consultants or Instagram to all our Wednesday lives. Uh, we, this week is the great grit debate. So it's a grit in honor of black history month. It's the great grit debate. Um, so we're going to be talking about, um, grits, uh, and we actually have a big grit event on Friday. Um, so I'm sorry, you guys can't be here, but we'll be having fish and grits, <laughs> a fish and grit event on Friday in honor of black history month. So, um, it, you can eat your, you can enjoy grits too. And you can enjoy it with, uh, with a uh, grilled fish or like, you know, uh, sauteed fish as opposed to fried fish. So that's another option. Um, but please follow us. We're here to provide you guys with any help that you may need. And if you have any content um, ideas that you would like to see us do, we'd love to hear your feedback. That is me. Is somebody not muted? Any other questions out here? Any other questions that I miss anything in the chat? I'm checking now. You did go over um, healthy carb choices and we appreciate that intermittent fasting. I don't, oh, wait a minute, here's a question coming. What is the website? It's um, Ebony Nutrition Consultant, it's ebonynutrition.org or you can do the soulfoodpyramid.org. Um, because we actually created a, the my plate and when it used to be the pyramid, we created a soul food version of it. And now we have a soul pyramid also just to make it, um, ethnically like appropriate for everybody. So it's soulfoodpyramid.org or, uh, ebonynutrition.org. Either one will take you to our website. And, right. and we, um, have another session, um, coming up, I believe in, and I don't know why I can't remember this, but it's coming soon, I believe in two weeks. Yeah, I think it's in two weeks. You're gonna have, I don't know if you're gonna have Ronice or if you're gonna have Fabiola, but they're both our founder, two of our founders, um, and uh, they're amazing. <laughs> yes, and, and I believe Fabiola is going to be at our Spring Worksite Wellness Conference. Um, um, for our members that are on this platform is planned for April 30th, put that on your calendar. We're doing it virtually. Our first spring worksite wellness conference. Um, registration will start in a week. 
um, the first week in March on our website, we'll um, be uh, virtually presenting ways that you can uh, keep your worksite wellness program going or get one started. It'll start at 9 a.m. and we'll probably go to about 2 p.m. And again, it's free for our MESA members and we're bringing HEVNI back to our Worksite Wellness Conference as well. Anything else for Selena? Yeah, I just wanna finish by saying, um, whatever your goals are, if you wanna run them by me, I can help you. I, like, it's literally my favorite thing to do is help people with their SMART goals. I do it for everybody in my classes, so don't feel bad. We can connect. I can help you develop some SMART goals, but also make sure you have a support system, okay? Nobody is an island. Like, you need the support, and it's great that you guys have this together. Um, be each other's support system um, in order, like, if you want to live longer, if you want to be healthier, if you uh, don't want to be that like old, like old lady that your grandma, you remember your grandmother being so like, I always say, I remember my grandmother being so frail, but she wasn't really that old. So, um, you know, like we want to live healthier and we want to live longer Then support each other, create, um, support groups, whether they're online or in person, walking groups, um, troubleshooting weight loss groups, uh, give each other meal prep ideas. It's actually way, way easier when you have a support system and you have somebody to bounce off ideas with, which is why our in-person classes have been so popular because it's kind of a built-in support system for everybody. Um, so with the Zoom, you get a little bit of le less of that in-person contact. So it's a little less personal, but please uh, find that support system, whether it's your family, uh, friends, your coworkers, just make sure you have somebody to help you through that. And I'm definitely here. And I know Fab and Roni, um, our founders are here for to help you guys with that. If you want, if you would like us to create a support system for you guys, we can do that also. Oh, I love those. I love your tips, your ideas. That's perfect for anyone on the platform that is con you're considering a campaign for your worksite wellness program. Um, those are great ideas. Um, and tell me, um, can you help uh, with a lot of the people here um, work for school districts, they're employees and they have worksite wellness programs. Can your consulting services, your organization provide Zoom sessions like this for our school employees? Yeah, we can do that. We actually um, do an uh, in-person class for uh, the school district in our area, in our county right now. And it's actually, we're teaching them how to actually cook like real food. So there can be more real food cooking for mm -hmm. students in this. So we're teaching them knife skills and we teach them different things. Um, but yes, we can also do it for employees. We were forever trying to launch a, um, like a, like a school bus driver program like a school bus driver wellness program. And we're kind of still trying to do that. Like, how can we get like a school bus driver wellness program and get them like to be like the wellness, like, you know, exercising and eating right and walking together group. How can we do that? But yeah, we definitely can help with any kind of um, consulting needs that you need, whether it's uh, to help like a train the trainer situation um, or if it's for the actual employees, we can definitely do that. Wonderful, great information for us. Any more questions out there? I don't see anything else. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for joining us. Follow us on Facebook, um, follow us on Instagram, and we also have a, a YouTube channel. Um, we'll be posting this recording. So tell your colleagues, tell your coworkers, and tell them how great this was and all the great tips and they can check it out on our YouTube. And you can always find anything you need on our website, www.mesa.org. Enjoy your evening and uh, make sure you get your grocery list together so you can uh, shop for your healthy food and get going on your meal prepping. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much, Selena. That Thank was great. Thank you for having me, Rhonda. I appreciate it.